what is going on everybody today i have a guide on alliance rogues for you we're going to be going over how to get all of your runes what runes to use for pve and pvp what talents to use rotations and how to get your pre-raid biz and biz raid gear all right without further ado let's get straight into it so firstly we're going to be going over your runes your first rune that you're going to be getting is your shadow strike rune you're going to get that from your class trainer for humans you're going to get a quest for thrice stolen in Northshire, you're gonna go to the Defia stash box, which is next to the latrines. It's at 52, 52. Next for dwarves and gnomes, you are gonna get the thrice stolen quest. You're gonna have to go to the frost main loot cache at 3080 in the cave on the south border of the kind of starting area. For night elves, you're gonna have the second story work, and you're gonna go to the idol on the roof, which is at 6042. The next room that you're gonna be getting is the quick draw room. For humans, you're gonna have to get the four pieces of the maps together. The top right piece is from the kobolds in the area, which are located in the two mines. The top Top left piece is from the Defias in the area. The bottom right piece is from the Murlocs, and the bottom left pieces are from the Riverpaw Outrunners. Then when you finish getting all these four parts together, you're gonna combine them to get the Elwyn treasure map. Then you're gonna use the treasure map at 8080 next to a tree stump to find a chest which has the rune in it. For dwarves and gnomes, you're gonna have these same four map pieces. The top right are from the frost main, the top left are from the grogs, the bottom right is from the leaper gnomes, the bottom left are from the Dark Iron Spies at the Southeast Goldborough Quarry. You're going to combine them together and get the Dunmoreau Treasure Map, and you're going to use them at 4744 under the bridge between Karanos and Ironforge. Next we have Slaughter from Shadows. For humans, you're going to climb over the crates to the roof on the north of the Inn in Goldshire. At 4662, you're going to find a rusty lockbox next to the chimney, and you're going to get it from that. Dwarves, you can find the rusty lockbox on top of the Inn at Karanos, 4752. You just have to go up the mountain and jump off into the roof. The next one that you get here is Mutilate. And for humans, you're going to pickpocket Garrick Padfoot. You're going to obtain Cuddy's Note. And then you have to bring Cuddy's Note to Cuddy, which is right next to the starting area for humans at 5052. He's touching the wall. You have to get real close to him or you can't see him. For dwarves, you have to pickpocket the Dark Iron Dwarves at the south of Helm's Bed Lake until you obtain Black Rat's Note. And then you're going to bring Black Rat's Note to Black Rat at 57.45. And same thing, he's stealth, he's hard to see, you got to get real close to him. Next you got Between the Eyes. For humans, you're going to go to the house at the end of Cutthroat Alley in Stormwind. And there's going to be a chest upstairs. As a note, this does spawn two level 10 enemies that will ambush you. so. Just have your sprint ready and you can just run out of there no problem. For dwarves and gnomes in the Forlorn Cave in Ironforge, there's a chest outside the Rogue Trainer area. To the right of the stairs is a little niche at 5213 that contains a chest. Next, arguably your best offensive ability here is the Saber Slash. For humans, you're going to go to the hill behind Centennial Hill in Westfall, and you're going to see these Elite Defia Scouts. They do have a buff active. It's called Escape Plan, which as soon as they sense danger, as soon as they aggro you, they're going to run away. So you're going to have to stealth up to them, pickpocket it, and you should get it from that. For Dwarves and Gnomes, you can also go to Lachma Dam, and there is going to be a little platform on the Stone Rot Dam at 4613. And there is a platform behind where the quest givers, you know, are, so you can just jump down, and then there's a little rope to use to get back up. The next one that we have here is Blade Dance. For Cubans, you're going to go pickpocket Defias Bandits in Westfall until you receive the discrete envelope, and that leads you to a chest outside the back entrance of the Dead Mine at 4180 and you can just kill the highway runners and whatever and it'll just drop from that for dwarves you're going to pickpocket dark iron dwarves until you get the dark iron lockbox good news here is that you only need lock picking one to open the lockbox so as long as you have that train then you are good to go next we have shiv for shiv you're going to go to duskwood and you're going to go to jorgen's farm at 5073 and you're going to pickpocket the defias there until you get the engraved gold ring then you're going to go to the cemetery at 2045 and there is gonna be a statue you're gonna do forward slash kneel and you will get the room next we have in venom you're gonna go to hillsbrad foothills and go to Dernhold keep and you're gonna go to 8040 there is a vendor behind the building where toth tog thagar is located and you're gonna buy the hot tip for 45 silver 
and you're going to receive a map and a safe combination. Then you're going to follow the river north until you reach the western plague lands, and you'll find a waterfall right when you get to WPL. At the bottom of the waterfall is going to be a chest, and inside is going to be in Venom. The next one here is going to be Deadly Brew, another very key vital component to your runes and rotation as a DPS rogue. At level 20, you're going to receive a letter in the mailbox that says an offer from C. It's going to lead you to Pyrewood in the Silver Pine Forest. There's a hut outside of the entrance of Pyrewood where you'll find a chest. As soon as you loot the chest, it starts the Horn of Excellos quest. The quest takes you over to the Stone Talon Mountains at 5852 to talk to Venix. You have to loot or pickpocket from the Venture Co. operators in the east of Stone Talon Mountains to get the Venture Co. work order. Then you're going to bring the Venture Co. work order to Venix and he'll give you a breaching charge. Then you have to go back to Silver Pine Forest and go into Shadowfang Keep alone. You're going to use the breaching charge to open the lock gate. As a note, if you die in Shadowfang Keep or log out, or if you basically don't finish this before leaving, then you're going to have to go back to Stone Town Mountain to get another breaching charge. Then you're going to sneak through the dungeon, and there's going to be two elites that you need to pickpocket and get their keys from, or their half keys from, really. One is Jamela, which is located in the right side of the dining hall, and the other is Jafel. So right after the dining hall, you're going to go to the right, and you're going to see them there kind of on the left -ish. Then you have to find a safe place because you're going to lose stealth while you are combining the two keys together. You're going to go back into stealth, go back to the courtyard and enter the stables where all the horses are. And you're going to use the key to open the chest make sure there's no paths next to you. Otherwise, they will aggro onto you. And in the chest is going to be the Horn of Excellos. Then you're going to return to the hut in Pyrewood, turn in the quest of Excellos. Then you have to hearth or you have to run to South Shore fly to iron forge then you're going to get another message in the mailbox saying that hey come back to the hut i have your reward you're going to go back to the hut in pyrewood and then you're going to get deadly brew from the chest next we have main gauche you're going to also have to be level 20 for this and you're going to have to do the classic grisby quest in ratchet and the barons you have to get 24 fish oil from the Murlocs and Naga, generally in like the Hillsbrad foothills area is the best place to farm that. You have to get 20 Dark Iron Ordinances from the Elite Iron Dwarves in the Wetlands or the north part of Loch Mandan. You have to get 16 Turbo Shredder Charges when you get those from the Venture Co. Shredders in Stonetown Mountains or you can just get it from an engineer. After turning in the item, you have to go back to your capital city, so that's Stormwind for us, and then you have to go back to Grisby in Ratchet, and he'll give you the rune for three gold. And lastly, we have the just a flesh wound, which is from turning in the Waylaid Supplies for the Atheroth Commerce Authority, and you're gonna get the rune of teasing as soon as you get too friendly with them. Alrighty, and for your PvE talents and runes, you are going to put 2 points into Sinister Strike, 5 points into Malice, 3 points into Improved Slice and Dice, 2 points into Murder, 3 points into Ruthlessness, and 1 point into Relentless Strikes. This gives you the most amount of sustained damage possible, which is very different from the PvP build, which is essentially getting as much damage out as fast as possible, but with very little sustain. Um, the reason being is because most of your damage is going to be coming from poisons and bleeds from your chest, your hands, which is going to be Saber Slash, and your legs, which is going to be in Venom. Uh, this is proven to be the highest DPS in Raid as well as in Dungeons, and I'll go over the rotation a little bit later on here. Alrighty, and for your PvP build, you have mainly two PvP builds. One is, in my opinion, much more superior than the other one. You're going to put five points here into your opportunity, five points into camouflage, three points into improved ambush, and then you can either put three points here into initiative, three points into lightning reflexes, three into gouge, or three into malice. I personally prefer putting three points here into gouge, as that is going to help you kind of get off a bit of more of a rotation and give you more of a, a sustained um, approach and also to help interrupt some casters as well. Or my much preferred build is going to be 3 points into Gouge, 2 into Sinister Strike, 3 points into Improve Backstab, 4 points into Precision, 2 points into Endurance, and 2 points into Improved Sprint. This is going to give you a bit of a better... This is going to give you a little bit more of a sustain, as well as just consistent damage throughout. And it also helps you kind of do your normal opener as well. 
for your chest, you're going to probably run Slaughter from Shadows. The reason that you're not going to run Deadly Brew is that when you have a dot or you have something ticking on your enemy, you are not going to be able to gouge successfully. Uh, so you're not going to be able to get your energy back like you normally do. Um, so you could do that. You could do just a flesh wound. Not really worth it, to be honest with you. Uh, you could do quick draw, but also then again, not really useful. Slaughter from Shadows is much better because it just reduces your backstab by 20. So that's that's huge, to be honest with you. For your hands, you don't want to do Saber Slash as that is a uh, bleed. So it's going to also break your gouge effect. You can run Shiv if you want. That could be useful. Uh, you could do Mutilate um, or you could do Shadow Strike because that gives you a little bit more of a mobility. It's kind of up to you which one you want to use here. Uh, for your legs, as again, you don't really want to use in Venom because then again, that does also, you know, remove the target out of your gouge. Um, you can definitely run Blade Dance. That's going to help you with your melees a little bit better here. Or you could even do Between the Eyes as you, we don't even have Kidney Shot yet. So that could very well be your uh, usefulness right there because it's also uh, increased by your attack power and it also stuns the target. So you know, if someone's running away, it's a little bit easier to catch up with them. Alrighty, now the rotation looks something like this. You're gonna open out with Ambush. You're then gonna go for two quick backstabs. If that doesn't finish off the enemy, then you're gonna have to Eviscerate uh, to use your last bit of points, or you can go ahead and use Shiv or use another backstab. Another option that you have here is if it is a caster, they're going to try to get away from you at that point, at which point that you can do your gouge to get some energy back and wrap him up before the gouge is over. Or just make sure that you have enough energy for a kick and you should be good to go. Alrighty, now as for your PvE rotation, what you're going to want to do is you're going to start out in stealth and use Garrett. Afterwards, you're going to use Saber Slash once, then you are going to go ahead and use your slice and dice and that's going to give you about 16 seconds on your slice and dice afterwards you're going to use saber slash once and twice more to make sure that you have three stacks on it after that you can use your sinister strike once at which point you should have three to four combo tar uh, points on the target and then you're going to use slice and dice once more at that point if you if it's running out if it is not running out yet, then you want to get in one more Saber Slash to refresh, and then you're going to use your Invenom or your Rupture. The condition on those two is that if the target has five points of Deadly Poison on them is when you want to use Invenom, and if the target does not, then you want to use Rupture instead. Afterwards, you're going to get, you know, two more combo points up, and then use Slice and Dice again. Always make sure that that is always active on the target. Alrighty, and just kind of to reiterate it here, you're going to be doing Garrett, then you're going to be using a Saber Slash, then you're going to be doing a Slice and Dice. This Slice and Dice with Improved Slice and Dice should be about 16 to 17 seconds long. Afterwards, you're going to use your Saber Slash and Saber Slash again. This is going to bring your Saber Slash stacks up to three on the enemy, at which point you're going to have the maximum amount of stacks on the enemy possible. And you're going to see a Sinister Strike here, and that is because Sinister Strike does ever so slightly more damage than your Saber Slash does when it's at three stacks already. So you might as well just weave that in here there. Now, if you are about to run out of your Slice and Dice, you're going to use it right here, okay? If it is not over, let's say you have another eight seconds on it, you're not going to waste your combo points into putting it and refreshing it, okay? So what you're going to do in that case is you're going to do one more Sinister Strike and then you're going to do one more Slice and Dice. Sorry, you're going to do one more Saber Slash. This is going to refresh your combo points here. This is going to reflect. This is going to refresh your tick on Saber Slash, so that way you'll have five combo points. Now it is possible that when you did use your a slice and dice here that you were refunded one combo point at which point you're going to have one two three and then four here is going to be from another uh saber slash at this point if the enemy has Alrighty, and then once you do get up to five combo points, because you don't really want to use any finishers besides slice and dice unless you get up to five as that is really a big big difference in dps for yourself 
So first you're going to check is slice and dice up and if it is up is it going to last the remainder of the fight? Um, or is it going to last the remainder of that combo? Okay, if it is true, then great. And then you're going to go ahead and go to the next step. So now, are you at five stacks of deadly poison on the enemy target? If you are, then you're going to use Rupture. Or sorry, you're going to use Envenom. So if number one and number two are true, use Envenom. If number one is true and number two is not true, then use Rupture. And that's really the simplicity of it. You never really want to use Eviscerate and you're always going to be doing this kind of little equation every time you are on a boss really Alrighty, now just for some uh, quick additional tips here when you are doing raids and dungeons specifically for the black fathom deeps raid you want to make sure that you have bfd sharpening stone you want to make sure that you have that on your offhand at all times when you're in there if you have a feral druid with wild strikes you are not going to put it on your main hand you know the wild strikes is going to be your main hand there black fathom deep sharpening stone is going to be your offhand if you have no feral druid you want to make sure that you have it on both of your hands here if you are doing a regular dungeon you want to make sure that you have instant poison on both of your weapons unless obviously you have a feral druid dps at which point you're only going to put it on your offhand as well now for regular dungeons and for the raid you're going to have two different consumables that you always want to make sure that you have on so one of those is going to be your lesser agility potion this gives you eight agility for an hour this is actually a better bang for your buck than your scroll of agility because those go for about three gold you don't really want to use them and next you have your ogre strength potion these are eight strength for an hour it's about 14 silver whereas the strength scroll part twos are really expensive as well additionally you can also have your black rum label which gives you an extra 15 stamina for 15 minutes which is nice and then also another consumable that you can have is boiled clams not super amazing however it does give you an extra four stamina and four spirit just prevents you from dying when you do take on aggro Alrighty now, starting out for your pre-raid biz gear, what you want to do is for your helmet, you want to get Humbert's Helm. If you have the money for it, it's about 40 to 80 gold. If you can't get that, get yourself the Ringed Helm. If you can't get that, then get the Green Tinted Goggles. Now for your best in slot shoulders, it's actually Mantle of Thieves. However, it's going for about 700 gold on my server right now. So those aren't really useful. If it does drop and you do Razor Fang Crawl, there you go, you're in luck. Otherwise, just get yourself a pair of uh, crafted dark leather shoulders. Your best in slot chest is the Tunic of Westfall. You get that from doing the Dead Mines quest. Alrighty, as for your wrists, you're going to want the Jurassic Wrist Guards if you can afford them. They're about 40 to 50 gold right now. Or if you can't afford that, then you're going to get the Mad Wolf Bracers. Those are about 10 gold. If you can't afford that, then get yourself something of the power, such as Scouting Bracers of Power, Rigid Bracelets of Power. Those are about 6 attack power. Alrighty, now for your cape, you can get the Cape of the Brotherhood from the Deadlines. It is from the last boss. If you can't get that, that's alright. There's also the Glowing Lizard Scale Cloak, which drops from Wailing Caverns. Alrighty, as for your hands, you're going to want to get one of the two crafted items. You either get the Heavy Earthen Gloves or you get the Pilferer's Gloves. As for your legs, you can either get the Leggings of the Fang, which is the most realistic one to get. Or you can get Troll's Bane Leggings, which sell for quite a lot of gold. For your belt, you want to get the Deviate Scale Belt or you can do the quest I perch venom to get the windborn belt for your feet you're either going to want to get the feet of the lynx which are about 20 gold or you can do the quest mortality wanes in razor fend crawl to get the lancer boots all right and as for your rings the first one that you want to get is the silver lanes family seal which is a drop from a boss in shadowfane keep and the second one that you want to get is the seal of rin which is started from the quest line the unsent letter as for your main hand weapon, you want to get the Cruel Barb drop from Deadmines, and for your offhand, the Cross Dagger of 
agility or of power if you can afford it if not then you can just get any cross dagger that has agility and strength in it or just agility or just strength great so now that you have all of your pre-raid biz gear you want to go ahead and get into the bfd raid as soon as possible with all those consumes and all that gear that you just spend a lot of time collecting and what you want to pay attention for is the twilight slayer's cowl which is going to be your headpiece that's going to be from bfd your shoulders are actually going to be from a random drop in razor fern crawl those are the mantle of thieves your chest is going to be the twilight slayer's tunic which is also from bfd your hands are going to be the void touch leather gloves which come from leatherworking and you have to personally be leather worker at a level 100 to do that and there's a whole guide on how to do that on youtube your legs are going to be the trolls bane leggings which are a will drop your rings is going to be the protectors band and the thunder brow ring your main hand is going to be the honed dark water talwar from bfd and the chipped bite of Seracus from bfd your range weapon is going to be the bale modan blunderbuss from bfd your neck is going to be the high tide choker the Sergeant's Cloak is going to be from PDP rank 3. Your wrists are going to be the Jurassic Wrists from the Razor Ma Matriarchs in the Wetlands. Your waist is going to be the Court of Aquanus from BFD. Your feet are going to be the Twilight Slayer's foot pads from BFD. Your trinkets are going to be the Avenger's Void Pearl from BFD and the Rune of Duty from being friendly with, with Warsong. And your offhand can be the Vampiric Boot Knife. Alrighty, well, that's all I got for you guys today. If you liked it, please go ahead and give it a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please give it a comment below and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. Hope you have a beautiful day. Peace.